What's up YouTube, it's your boy Brian coming at you with a new video today. In today's video, we got nine of the most shadiest, crookedest pastors you have ever known to walk the face of this earth, which is just sad, man. You know what I'm saying? But before we get into that video, I need y'all to comment, like, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification because I'm going to be dropping y'all some crazy videos, man. So anyway, so let's go and get started. Oh, another thing too, make sure y'all watch the video to the end because I'm doing an iPhone giveaway. So in order to be eligible to get in for it, there's a link at the bottom leaving your best email and I'll be picking two lucky winners at the end of the week. Boss, let's do it. From stealing from the hungry to killing their congregation, here's nine preachers gone wrong. This is craziness here, Jim. Crazy. Number nine, stealing from the needy. In the, in the west side of Chicago, a church run by Reverend Clarence Smith Jr. Clarence, called huh? the New Life Impact Church <laughs> that served as a safe place for lost souls in the neighborhood. It was a place where the hungry could be fed. At least that's what it was supposed to be. In reality, the Reverend was stealing from his members. Hundreds of thousands of dollars that came from a federally funded program to feed children in need was Shy taken by Smith. What did he spend that money on, you might ask? Well, $142,000 of it was spent on a Bentley. And more was spent on other luxury goods. And that's just what was uncovered in 2020. Smith has a long history of financial deviancy. Ten years prior, the Reverend was accused of swindling an elderly man. He supposedly used multiple signature forgeries to get over 100 grand from the poor guy. And that's not where his money troubles and sketchy behavior started. In 2012, he owed $80,000 in restitution fees, wow. but he filed personal bankruptcy to get out of it. My God, Plus, doing this. he's been sued twice by companies meant to supply food after he bailed on their contracts. And he's eight grand overdue on his church's property taxes. Wait a minute, you mean to tell me, man, my God, not on the church house, fam? The church house? You ain't paid the church bill, but you got that badass billing? Come on, man. Tighten up. His recent crimes stem from him over-reporting the number of meals he served to the needy. So the government sent him more money than he ever needed. Close to a million dollars was given to Smith's church. Hustle. But he would take it and use it for himself. Hustle. So what happened to him? Nothing. nothing. Well, he's under court supervision. Not exactly nothing. But it's more than likely he'll get no off with no hard convictions. Number eight. Creflo Dollar. Most people have some kind of bad experience with an airline, whether it be losing luggage, missing a flight, or getting delayed. The difference between Pastor Creflo Dollar and most people, though, is that most people don't think the solution to the problem is buying a $65 million private jet. But that's it. Now, hold on. Now, I'm like this here, man. You know, we got a pastor here in, here in uh, Houston, man, that I forgot the dude's name, but this guy been taught for the past 20 some odd years, man. Got mansions up and down 1960, got two, three helicopters and two, and two, three private planes. You know, I don't, I ain't hating on y'all, man, but you know, don't use the word to fat your pockets, man. That just, that just sad, kid. Let's get it. Exactly what Creflo asked his followers to help him do. He wanted each of his 200,000 members to donate 300 bucks to the cause, claiming it was so he could safely and swiftly yes, share the good right news now. of the gospel worldwide. To us, it sounds like he just wants a private jet to fly around the world in. There are so many better ways to use the money, like feeding the hungry, providing shelter, or just helping the needy in any way. But no. A $65 million jet is the solution to all the world's inequalities. And sadly, it looks like Creflo is going to get what he wants. His official ministries organization, the World Changers Church International, made an official announcement that they are ready to buy the jet. This isn't where Creflo's unholy deeds started, though. Back in 2012, he was arrested after getting into an argument with his 15-year-old daughter. Mm. She claimed that he punched and choked her, which he, of course, denied. Thankfully, the court wasn't as gullible as his congregation and still charged him with two misdemeanor counts. So you got a crooked daddy raising a crooked daughter. <laughs> what the hell you expect to happen, man? <laughs> Even the C's got the bullshit down pat. <laughs> Cruelty to children and simple battery. Wow. Despite this, Creflo is still getting his jet, so get ready to see him flying around the world soon, spreading his gospel. Number seven, Paul Jennings Hill. Sometimes people take their beliefs way too far, and Paul Jennings Hill is the perfect example of this. As a minister in the small town of Pensacola, Florida, with a beautiful wife and three kids, Hill had the textbook definition of a cookie cutter perfect life. 
But sometimes, he took his preachings a little too far. And one day, off the deep end, you see, Hill was a well-known anti-abortion extremist. Even making multiple television appearances where he said so-called defensive action must be taken against those who provide abortions. Shortly after these appearances, the Orthodox Presbyterian Church excommunicated him for his unholy activism. A year later in 1994, Hill took his beliefs and turned them into actions. He walked into an abortion clinic in his town named the Ladies Center. One of the doctors at the clinic and his bodyguard, John Britton and James H. Barrett, were the first Hill spotted. He opened fire on the two of them with a shotgun at close range, killing them both. The bodyguards... Wow, now this is a pastor. Now, I can only imagine in this crooked fool mind that he's doing justice, that he's doing God's work. That ain't that ain't how it is, man. Boy, you, boy, you giving Christians a bad name, a terrible bad name. His wife, June, was also nearby and wounded. Luckily, she survived the attack. Once he finished what he intended to do, Hill simply waited for police to arrive and arrest him. The excommunicated minister received the death penalty for his crimes against humanity, but he felt no remorse. While waiting on death row for 10 years, he once told the media that a great reward in heaven awaited him. Yeah, on September 3rd, 2003, it was executed by lethal injection. A fitting end for a sick, misguided man. Number six, Andy Savage. People can change, but does that mean they should be forgiven for everything they've done in the past? Well, sometimes sorry doesn't cut it. The High Point Church hosts a congregation of over 2,000 members every week in Memphis. One pastor of the megachurch named Andy Savage did the unspeakable. Over 20 years ago, when he was 22, serving as a youth pastor, he admitted to a sexual incident with the high school student he was teaching. What he described as an incident, his victim, Jules Woodson, called sexual assault. She came forward with the ordeal during the hashtag. Now, you know what, though, man? I know there's been a lot going on in this world, man. Like, all these females claim that they don't got raped and sodomized, molested, man. I don't believe half of them, man. I really don't, man. Because a lot of times, most women like powerful men or men that's in a certain position and they and they clout chasing, you know what I'm saying? And then they realize they made a bad decision and now they want to do dude in because maybe she's trying to get some money out of dude. I don't know. But now here it is. This dude, life is on the line because she said something. Y'all feel me cut that shit out. Like Me Too movement. Woodson claimed that Savage took advantage of the power dynamic between them as her teacher is an overreaching abuse of power. After it happened, he begged her for forgiveness and was beside himself asking for her not to tell anyone. Unfortunately, the statute of limitations was up, so the assault could not be legally pursued. Andy did receive quite a bit of backlash though, and, very surprisingly, some praise. Savage publicly announced to his congregation after much prayer and counsel, I now believe it's appropriate for me to resign from my staff position at High Point Church and step away from ministry in order to do everything I can to write the... Now, you know something? Now, I ain't, you know, I'm not taking up for these dudes, man. But, you know, as any man knows, man, when you a pastor, I know I got a lot of pastors here in Houston, man. They didn't... They good and shit out them deacons' wives and everything else, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not saying that, but women throw themselves at that. And I mean, I know for a man, you know, we're supposed to do what's right, but sometimes it's hard when you got some of them baddies coming at you like that, man. I mean, shoot, hey, yeah, we we spiritual beings and all that, man, but we still, man, we, we, we flesh, and the flesh get weak sometimes. I know my flesh get weak sometimes. Hey, you know. The wrongs of the past. This announcement and admission of guilt was oddly met with a standing ovation from the churchgoers and many online who praised Savage for admitting his mistakes. Owning up to what you did doesn't fix everything though. Jules Woodson has had to live with the trauma of her soul for over 20 years, while Savage is just receiving a pinch of the pain she had to deal with. What do you think about Mr. Savage? Should he receive some Savage punishment? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe button if you haven't already. Number five, Ted Haggard. Formerly one of the country's leading pastors for the evangelical faith, Ted Haggard's megachurch empire crumbled after it was discovered he wasn't as devout as he preached he was. Back in 1984, the pastor started off his career in Colorado Springs. He claimed that a vision from God told him he needed to create a church at the center of evangelism. Starting with the measly 22 people, Haggard grew his church, called the New Life Church, into over 14,000 members, hmm. making it one of the biggest churches in America. 
During this time, he was named the president of the National Association of Evangelicals. But what was going on behind the scenes? Everything he built up fell apart in 2006 when claims came out from a gay prostitute claiming Haggard had paid him for sexual acts multiple times. Oh. His empire fell overnight. Forced to give up his job at the church he created, he moved to Arizona. Now, that ain't a surprise, man. I mean, I'm not hating on the gay community, though, man. But I know in Houston, man, we got a lot of, you know, them, them flamboyant that be going, they be the one that be the first one in the, in the quiet on the pool pit. You know, sitting front row. You know, I ain't, I ain't again. I'm not hating on y'all though. I'm not hating on y'all. It just, that just, it, it's a little sus. While there, he says he received counseling to talk about his sexuality more. He admitted to having gay urges because of a molestation Ooh. from a man oh, when he was he a child, but that yeah, overall right. he was straight. Many were openly outraged with Hager after he preached homosexuality was wrong, then hypocritically participating in the very same acts. He now talks openly about the whole incident and says the scandal increased his faith. After a few years of reflection, Haggard and his wife, who stuck with him through everything, have opened a new church that welcomes LGBTQ members. Hopefully, Haggard will now be accepting of different people and begin to practice what he preaches. Can y'all imagine that? A whole church full of gays. Can you imagine that? A whole church made just for gays. Boy, this world going to hell with gasoline draws on. Number four, Same. Hillsong. Oh. Two types of consultants. There are those who swipe right on every opportunity, every deal that comes across their desk. And there are those who... A millennial hype beast preacher named Carl Lentz's career was taken down last year in November 2020 due to allegations of him cheating on his wife. The preacher worked for the world-famous Hillsong Church that has locations in over 30 countries with 150,000 weekly members attending sermons. Lentz served as the head pastor in the New York Hillsong Outpost, and he was well known for looking unconventional to the typical preacher. He's decked out in tattoos and often dressed like a hipster, most likely to appeal to younger audiences. He's even known for having high-profile celebrity followers, such as the Biebers, Selena Gomez, Vanessa Hudgens, and more. Despite all this success, Lentz was let go from his job as pastor at the end of 2020. And the very next day, he posted a picture of himself and his family at Justin Bieber and Haley Bieber's wedding, with the caption admitting that he was unfaithful to his wife. In interviews with multiple news outlets, Ranin Karim, a young actor and jewelry designer, admitted to an affair with Lentz that lasted months. Lentz's wife, Laura, only found out about the affair after a staffer at the Hillsong office saw Lentz's messages to Ranin on his computer. Yet again, Sneak. Lentz gives us an example that preachers Sneak. aren't always holy, and they don't always follow the word of the Bible as law. They are, after all, just human. Number three, Warren Jeffs. Buckle your seatbelts, because the next entry is going to be a bit culty. Warren Jeffs served as the president of the FLDS, or the Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, a denomination of the Mormon religion. The FLDS broke off from the main LDS church in order to practice polygamy. In case you didn't know, that's having multiple wives. Jeff lived in a compound along with other fundamentalist members where some seriously messed up stuff went down. Jeff's father, Rulon, was the leader of the FLDS for many years. He had over 60 children and 20 wives. Oddly enough, after Rulon's death, Jeff married many of his father's wives, but that's not all he did. As the highest member in the church, he held the sole right to perform and assign marriages. In 2006, he was on the FBI's most wanted list for arranging marriages between underage girls and adult men. Additional charges against him included sexual conduct with minors and incest. After multiple years of court, Jeff was finally convicted to life in prison. While serving time, he has tried to hang himself, gone on multiple hunger strikes, and has been hospitalized at least once. Many believe that he somehow is continuing to lead the FLDS from behind bars, and present-day members still consider him to be one of God's chosen prophets. Wow. Nice Number two, this fool. Jeffrey Lundgren. Lose. The FLDS wasn't the only cult to stem off of the Mormon faith. Jeffrey Lundgren was a self-proclaimed prophet in the 1980s that led one of these so-called cults. It was during these years that Lundgren would lead Bible study sessions for his followers out of his home. At these sessions, he would bully and discourage anyone who did not agree with his biblical interpretations. Eventually, he amassed a few devoted followers, 
some of whom gave Lundgren their life savings to support his preaching. One day, he told his followers that he received a vision from God, telling him they must move to Kirtland, Ohio, in order to witness the second coming of Jesus Christ himself. During this time, Lundgren lived with seven of his followers. The only ones who didn't live in the same building were the Averys. Lundgren saw this as an obvious sin against himself and God, and he was especially angry to find out that Averys had a separate bank account to use only for their family. Mm -mm. He kept telling his followers that they had to seize the Kirtland Temple by force in order to see God, but he soon changed his preaching. He told them that they had to kill a family of five in order to show their devotion. Oh, it just so happens that there were five members of the Avery family to prepare. You know what, man? That's some of the craziest mind stuff you could ever do to somebody, man. And religion, man, that's some powerful stuff, man. If you, oh, man, that's, man, that mind me what happened out there in uh, Waco, Texas some, some odd years ago, man. They had a whole cult thing out there and he made everybody kill themselves. Crazy, man. Prepare for the wicked crime, Lundgren told his followers to dig a pit in the barn close to where they lived in order to bury the bodies there. After a meeting with all the church followers, including the Averys, Lundgren and his accomplices killed all five members of the Avery family. Their bodies weren't discovered until nine months later when the police received a tip about the barn. Lundgren was given the death penalty by lethal injection and was executed in 2006. Just another preacher overcome by power. And number one, Barry McCow. Barry McCow has a long history of being a convicted felon before and after his time as a preacher. His early crimes consisted of Ponzi schemes, where he scammed investors out of a hundred million bucks in one of the biggest accounting fraud cases of all time. After serving decades in prison for this crime, McCow got out and seemingly was on the straight and narrow path since he started teaching ethics as a pastor in San Diego. It was in San Diego that one of Minkow's congregation members asked him about a nearby money management firm. After looking into it, he realized something was off. So he tipped off the authorities, who discovered a $300 million pyramid scheme. With this major success, he started the Fraud Discovery Institute, where he worked as a fraud investigator, looking into cases similar to his own. But just because he was a fraud investigator doesn't mean he stopped committing fraud. He scammed his own church out of millions and was sentenced to more time in prison. He was released in 2019 and now lives in a small town outside of Tennessee after his movie-worthy roller coaster of a life. Thanks for watching. Which of these preachers shocked you the most? Tell us. Man, you know what, though? This is why. This is exactly why you have to. Pray about which church house you go to, man. You know what I'm saying? You got to pray and ask God to feed your spirit to find out where your spirit man is getting fed from. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody that's behind the pool pit ain't, ain't right, as you can already tell, right? Man, I don't know about this one, kids. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, though, man, I hope y'all enjoyed the video, man. Like I said, again, subscribe to the channel. Like the video. Comment on the video. If y'all want to win the iPhone 12, the link is in the description. Leave me your best email. And ask a few questions, well, answer a few questions, and you guys will opt in. in the, at the end of the week, I'll be announcing the two top winners, man. Y'all be good. Boss up. Oh